Dreams are not just fantasies, passing thoughts. Dreams are seeds that God invested in you before time began. Dreams are God's GPS system, sending you signals of what your purpose in life is. Every dream is a part of the puzzle of God's purpose and plan on the earth of which you play an important role. You mustn't give up on your dreams. You must not let your dreams pass. And every tear and every trial and every triumph you go through matters. Who said it's over? Your dream matters. Who am I talking to today that almost gave up? Almost felt like your dreams didn't matter. All I need you to do is let that dream be fed. Let that dream every day, just a little bit every day, do something. Move towards it. It will move towards you. You're dead without a dream. There just has to be something in you. You got to have something that drives you forward, something worth living for. Without a dream, I'm dying. Without a dream, I'm dying. You're either dreaming or you're dying. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have something to stimulate your brain, if you don't have something that keeps you sharp and focused, if you don't have challenges, you won't stay alive. You, you, you could drop into a pile of dust pretty quick if you don't have any. I don't care how old you are. I don't care who you are. You need a dream. Dreams motivate us. They energize us. They fire us up. You see, a dream, when you get it, will encourage you. There's something about a dream that brings encouragement and joy to people's lives. It gives you excitement. It encourages you. The people who are depressed, the people who are discouraged are the people who don't have a dream. Because when you have a dream, it makes you get up in the morning. It makes you put your clothes on and go to work because you've got a dream. And a dream has the power to encourage you. Never, ever be talked out of your dreams. Never allow dreams to be lost. Everything you want is on the other side of not giving up. Your trouble is your pathway to triumph. Your pain is your pathway to a higher praise. Your mess is a pathway to the miraculous things of God in your life. The dream is your destiny. The dream tells you where you're going. Your adversity will advance you. You know, somebody said many years ago, anything worth doing is worth doing well. But here's a new one for you. Anything worth doing is worth failing at. Because if you want to give yourself to something, give yourself to something that's worth failing over. How do you get rid of the fear of failure? It's real simple. You redefine failure. Okay, you redefine failure. Failure is not failing to reach your goal. Failure is not setting a goal. But everything that we're good at, we had to try and we failed. And we, the Bible says, if a man fall, get back up. Though the righteous fall seven times, the Lord will uphold him. Get up eight, just get back up, get back up, learn something. You see the champions. What you don't see is how they learn to get there. Maybe you've thought, well, I could try again, but I'll fail again. I don't have what it takes. I'm not qualified to do this. That's why it is imperative that we diligently seek God because God does not always call the equipped. Hear me out, this is so important, but he always equips those that he calls. When we realize that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, that is when our life begins to change. It's one thing to dream the dream. We need to dream the dream. The how you know it's another whole deal to actually live the dream. The world isn't changed just through dreamers. It's through people who press through, stay the course. I don't know about you, but when God speaks to me about the future, there's something in me that wants it to happen right now. But normally in the timing of God, there's a time lag between vision conception 
And sometimes it can be days, months, even years before the vision is finally fulfilled. And then we need to ask that, so why the, why the delay? It's not that God is deliberately holding things back because he's me. No, God's a good God. He's a loving father. He wants the best. But he often knows that we're not ready to live the dream when he gives us the dream. But if you're in the preparation season, can I say in Jesus' name, don't quit. Don't take shortcuts. Don't compromise. Pass the test. And then the glorious promise is, in God's timing, promotion will come. But I want to tell you, there is always a gap between when you see the dream in your heart to when you see the dream in reality. See, a lot of us, we want to get a dream on Sunday and have it come to pass on Monday. But God, He has this way of preparing us for the ultimate plan that He has for our life. Remember, you have to become who you're supposed to become so you can do what you're supposed to do. And I think the reason a lot of people put these dreams aside is because of a false thought. You know, the moment I have a dream, it's supposed to come true. The problem is you get a God-sized dream, but you don't get God-sized results in the moment you get the dream. If God's given you a dream, then God will fulfill that dream for your life. You don't have to manipulate people, use people, betray people, coerce people. You don't have to live in fear. You're going to lose the dream. You just pursue it. And God says, I'll bring it to pass. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. And a lot of people will reject a God-sized dream because they're afraid to risk. They just can't believe God will do anything great in their life. And most give up because when they start pursuing that dream and experience the pain or betrayal or heartache, they want out. I'm telling you, you cannot experience some of the most enjoyable things in life without some risk. That's what will set you out as well. And that's why if you're looking for a safe life, you're looking for a safe marriage, you're looking for a safe career, you're looking for nothing. No risk, no reward. No risk, no nothing. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. And every dream, eventually the rubber meets the road. Every dream, there's a moment where I have to make a decision. Every dream, there's a moment where I have to step out and say, am I going to be obedient to the thing that God's asked me to do? What often happens is that we negotiate our lives down to the lesser of the dreams that God gave us. You know, the big dreams, the great dreams, the ones that make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, the ones that make you stop and wonder, holy cow, is this possible? Could I ever really do this? Those are the ones we throw away the most easily. And we end up maybe living the secondary or supplemental dreams. And over long periods of time, most people even shove those away. And they live their life essentially dreamless. We remember when we were children and naive and didn't know any better, at least we knew how to dream. Boy, we had big plans. And I don't think God ever intended for us to give them up. Your dream has nothing to do with your age. It has nothing to do with your current circumstances. Everybody's creative. Just look at the little kid. Every little kid is creative. And by the time they get sixth grade, we've educated them out of it. And now they're drawing in the lines. And now they've conformed to what we think they ought to be doing. God gave you the capacity to dream. Guess what? He expects you to use it. It's not too late. It's never too late to start dreaming. Never too late. Make your life count. Make it worth it. Do something with your life that is significant. 